Welcome to the fifth episode of the J.P. Eisenhower Show. I'm your host, J.P. Eisenhower, here this week with special guest Charlie Fleming to talk about the top headlines from the NFL. Let's get right into it. A major headline where the announcement is going to be made soon is the Spygate 2 announcement on what the Patriots' punishment will be. Charlie, what's your view on this situation? Well, the Patriots messed up again, but I can't really blame them. I mean, they're just trying to find any way they can to win, and I don't think they should be harshly punished for that. I mean, how about you? Yeah, I feel like once you've had your third problem in almost te- a little bit over a decade, there needs to be some kind of harsh punishment. All right, yeah, Despite I agree with that. The first by gate, there was a little bit lesser of a punishment. Last time with the deflate gate, there was the draft pick taken away. Tom Brady had his suspension. This is now the third time. And you, when you look at the video, it's fairly clear they work in some way with the Patriots. The Patriots know what they're doing. They said they were filming the advanced scout, but the advanced scout was nowhere in the film. And when you just look at the entire situation, it doesn't look good for the Patriots. They're, I'm going to call it a cover story because I'm really not buying it too much. When you look at the entire situation and what happened, I, you can't tell me that this far into the season they don't know the rules. Uh, they definitely do. They're a very corrupt organization. They play dirty. They find their way to win. And they do a good job of it, I'll tell you that. Uh, you seem so, to have a certain view on the Patriots there. I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't like the Patriots. I don't, but they, they know how to win. They know how to cheat. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting discussion to have as their punishment is expected to be handed down soon. Another discussion to have is the discussion of Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson really the clear-cut MVP this year. Patrick Mahomes having the MVP season last year. Which quarterback do you think is the better quarterback? I mean, look at the stats. First of all, Lamar Jackson is a 22-year-old kid. Just got out of college. Um, look back at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow is 23 and just won the Heisman. Lamar Jackson's 22 and is about to win the NFL MVP. That, that's unbelievable. And Lamar Jackson, he's thrown for nearly 3,000 yards. He has six interceptions to go along with 33 touchdowns. And he has the most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single season. I mean, he just broke Michael Vick's record of, what was it? It was a a little bit over 1,200, I believe, 1,100. And then over six or 700-yard rushing games or something? Yeah. I mean, he's definitely put up some crazy stats this year. But I think looking at it, who scares me more? I would be more afraid as a team to go up against Patrick Mahomes just because of the off-schedule throws he can make. Lamar Jackson can really beat you with his legs. But when he's asked to really use his arm, he's not as effective when he has to win game. When you have to win a game on his arm, you can win a game off Patrick Mahomes' arms. He showed it time and time again, competing with the top teams in the NFL, just the destroying some of the top defenses in the NFL. You saw last year, the AFC Championship game, he shredded the Patriots' defense, which held the Rams to just three points in the Super Bowl, and he had 50 touchdowns last year in his first full season starting. There's really no one like Patrick Mahomes in the game today. And he's really, I feel like we always forget. We're forgetting last season and all that he did last season just because of all the Lamar Jackson hype this season. And I feel like we need to go back a bit and remember an incredible season Patrick Mahomes had. And only two games, he had missed two games because of injury. And he still has over 3,600 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, and an 106.2 passer rating. This he's definitely one of the best players that we're going to see in the NFL for a while. I I agree he's one of the best players, but let's compare passing ratings. What what's Lamar's passer rating? One twelve point eight. What's Patty Mahomes? It's one oh six. Exactly. I will say though, when you look at just who can turn a com- completely turn a game, both of these quarterbacks can completely take over games. Lamar with his legs and Patrick Mahomes with his arm. But I feel like when you look at it from a quarterback perspective, when you see Patrick Mahomes not really having a running game and still putting up crazy numbers in in the passing game, when you know that they're not going to be stacking the box, they're going to be loading deep to cover him, and he's still making absolutely incredible plays, and the off-schedule plays he makes, I think he's definitely got to be one of the top quarterbacks by the time he retires in NFL history. I agree. He has that potential. He has a cannon for an arm to make any throw. The thing that separates Lamar 
from Patrick Mahomes is the legs. Think about it. Most 100-yard rushing games in NFL history from a quarterback leads the NFL or leads the quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing yards. I mean, he has more rushing yards than a lot of teams combined, including our Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a great matchup to watch in the playoffs throughout the years. Patrick Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson. Another headline that came in, Josh Gordon suspended for PEDs and substance abuse. How much will this affect the Seahawks' ability to make a playoff run without that deep threat? Stay off the weed. Stay off the weed. I mean, Josh Gordon, unbelievable player. But to be honest, I do not think it will affect the Seahawks that much. I mean, how many games has he played in this year? I think for the Seahawks, four. Four. About. He's probably caught 200, 200 yards receiving. I mean, he did have a 60-yard catch on Sunday. But to be honest, the Seahawks have other weapons, such as Tyler Lockett, that they can – they're just fine. They won't affect him. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like – the Seahawks definitely have other weapons, but when you look at it, there's a reason they brought Josh Gordon in. There is. They were looking at Antonio Brown or Josh Gordon. They took Josh Gordon, which kind of says something about Antonio Brown. Yeah. That's, that's a whole another, different yeah, topic. That's another story. But um, when you look at Josh Gordon, he adds that extra threat. DK Metcalf is really your red zone receiver. Tyler Lockett, he's great, but he's always going to be double teamed. That's the player that every team is going to mm -hmm. take away. So Josh Gordon was really that second deep threat you have. He You're going to get him one-on-one, -on -one and he can make a lot of big plays. I feel like without that, they might struggle, especially when you look at some of the games they had, like versus the Rams, mm -hmm. where they really need that passing game to show up, and Josh Gordon wasn't on the field as much because he was still learning the offense before that game. But I feel like it might have a big impact on their offense's ability to really have big plays and make those big plays, especially with the running game taking a hit with Rashad Penny going down. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Josh Gordon adds explosiveness to their offense. I mean, it makes them more spread out, more targets. But I don't think that it will cut off the Seahawks' offensive projection that much. It's definitely an advantage when he's there. But when he's not there, it's not like a decimating loss. It's yeah. not going to ruin them. I feel like, though, when you're in that playoff situation where you have to have that drive, would you rather have a rookie receiver and a veteran double teamed or a rookie receiver, a veteran double teamed, and a veteran one-on-one? -on -one? Well, I'd rather have the second option, but I don't think it hurts him that much. I mean, it's definitely an advantage. Yeah, of course, with Russell Wilson, he can definitely get rid of disadvantages, but with how the Seahawks' offense has been up and down so far, I think Josh Gordon is going to be a huge loss. Kids, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got to get his act together. Five suspensions in, what, eight years? Nine I think years? it's been more than five. More than I five? mean, he's had a well, lot of problems in Cleveland. Drugs. He had problems in Cleveland. He had problems with the Patriots. Then now he has problems with the Seahawks. You always got to hope a player like that gets back on track. It's really sad. He's so talented. And that's going to be it for this week on the J.P. Eisenhower Show. Remember to join us next week when we'll be talking about the top college football headlines. Special, special thanks to Charlie Fleming for joining me this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week on the J.P. Eisenhower Show.